The fundamentalist apologist claims that they do indeed have the empty tomb of Christ, which of course confirms the resurrection, as reported by the Gospels, but is this evidence confirmed, and more importantly, is it enough to make me reconvert today? Stay tuned and we'll see. Now this is interesting, because of course we know if we can find good concrete evidence of the tomb of Jesus Christ, and evidence that there are no remains of this Christ in the tomb, and has been empty since he was placed in it, it certainly does give more credence to the fable of the resurrection, doesn't it? It certainly wouldn't be 100% proof. It could be argued that the body was stolen, the body was moved, but it certainly does fall more in line with the New Testament story, doesn't it? And the Christians, and especially the fundamentalists, state that we do indeed have this empty tomb. But the problem is, there's three of them. Now the first one, which could be considered possibly the final resting place of Yeshua, is one that was largely propagated in a documentary by James Cameron, backed by the work of a journalist named Simchaw Yakubovici, if I'm pronouncing that right. And their documentary was titled The Lost Tomb of Jesus. Now, of course, this story is about what they call the Taupiet Tomb, discovered in 1980 in East Jerusalem's Old City. And this story became very popular because it was propagated by the media so much. And the reason the media gave it credibility is because it contained 10 ossuaries, which enclosed the family of Jesus. And there were inscriptions naming these family members. One translated to Jesus, son of Joseph. One was also thought to be of his wife, Mary Magdalene. Even an inscription naming who they thought was the son of Christ. And of course, this would be damning to Christianity because the human remains are still there, which would of course indicate that no resurrection took place whatsoever. If confirmed, that would be the end of Christianity. Now, I said this was popular in the media. It's been highly rejected by the majority of archeologists, theologians, linguistics experts, and biblical scholars. They say some of the inscriptions were partially legible and that the commonality of names used in those times do not indicate that this was the family tomb of Jesus Christ from Nazareth. And then of course there's the garden tomb, which some evangelical Protestants and Mormons contend is the actual former tomb of Christ before he rose from the dead. But because of the historical and location problems, the theory of the garden tomb being the final resting place of Jesus has largely been discarded. But there's yet another one that hasn't been discarded by most fundamentalists and many Christians as well, and that's the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. This was located in the Christian quarter of Old City, Jerusalem. Now I will give, this one is interesting, because there are a couple things about the nature of this site that would definitely raise the eyebrows of any skeptic, like myself. Now first, there is no proof that Christ was actually buried here, and that's pretty much the consensus among archeologists and other scholars. But there is a great deal of indirect evidence that shows it could be. And of course, being an empty tomb, this is what the fundamentalists jumped on when they declared this site legitimate. Well, first of all, let's look at the history of it. In approximately 135 AD, the Roman Emperor Hadrian ordered a cave containing a rock-cut tomb to be filled in for a flat foundation on which he would build a temple dedicated to, they believe, either Jupiter or Venus. And thus, this temple stayed until early in the 4th century, Constantine sent his mother Helena, as well as his close bishop Eusebius, to look for Christ's tomb, apparently after he saw a vision of a cross in the sky. Eusebius and Helena met with the Bishop of Jerusalem, in which they stated they located three crosses, one which cured people of death and believed to be the cross of Jesus. The temple that had been built several hundred years prior was torn down in which the tomb was found and the Bishop of Jerusalem, who is accompanying the two, declared this as the burial site of Christ. And here's a problem here right there. No one has indicated why they stated this was the burial site of Christ, and there's no verification that this was actually Jesus Christ's cross. It seems that Eusebius never stated why they thought the burial site belonged to Jesus Christ to begin with. But here are the points that prove it could be the burial site of Christ. One, although inside the city now, this tomb would have been located outside the city during the time of Christ's crucifixion. And this does correlate with the Gospels of where this tomb would be. And many other tombs found in the area do indicate that this was a Jewish cemetery. And of course, if he was in his own private tomb, and the fact that this was a separate tomb reserved only for the wealthy, would correlate with the story of Joseph of Arimathea purchasing the tomb for him. 
And also, after extensive archaeological work on the site, it was shown that the tomb had not shifted in all these centuries, but yet it remains empty. And you could correlate this further with Isaiah 53, verse 9, where it states that Jesus will be placed in the grave of the wealthy, although I have not researched yet the legitimacy of this Isaiah passage. But this is interesting because it does correlate the possibility of this being Christ's burial place. But it could also be anyone's burial place as well. As said, the consensus is there is not proof that this is Christ's burial ground, only evidence giving the possibility of such versus, say, the other rivals of the Talpiot site in the garden tomb. So if you had to pick one, this is probably the best possibility, possibility that it could be Christ's final resting place before three days later he rose from the dead. However, here's what the critics state. First of all, it was the Bishop of Jerusalem, Eusebius, and Constantine's mother that declared this was the tomb of Jesus, in which Emperor Constantine agreed and built the holy shrine around the site. No archaeologists back then were available to confirm anything. Second, it cannot be determined that Christians could or did authenticate tradition where all these events of crucifixion and burial occurred. The reason is because the vast members of Christianity fled Jerusalem, which was destroyed in 70 AD. And because of all the wars and confusion at the time, exact information was not preserved at all. So what does that mean for me? Am I going to reconvert based on this information? I would have to say absolutely not. It makes me wonder a little bit, but that's pretty much all. James Tabor, a highly educated college professor and proponent of the Talpia tomb site as being the final resting place for Jesus and his family, has an even alternate theory that the reason the Church of the Holy Sepulchre's tomb was empty is because Christ was only placed there temporarily during Passover, and then he was moved to the Talpia tomb where his bones would begin to gather the dust, and has remained there ever since. And Tabor is linked with the James Cameron theory. And he contends that three days later, after Christ's body was moved, Mary Magdalene came by, saw an empty tomb, didn't get the information of the removal of the body and transfer until later down the line, and then by then the mischievous superstition had already taken hold. I would say this is a wild theory at best, but it's interesting to think about. That Christianity was started because someone simply moved the body to another grave, and not everyone was told about it. But the point is, you have three tombs, and none of them have clear-cut, proven evidence that this is the burial ground of Christ, including the one with the most evidence of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. But the evangelist runs with it. They take something that is simply a possibility and somehow turn that into a proven fact, a truth. Their apologists speak it, and pretty soon every evangelist preacher is pontificating the same and then one day you walk into an argument with Joe Evangelical and he talks about the Church of the Holy Sepulchre as if it is established fact. And this is my problem with them. You do not have a proof, you have a maybe. And even if the maybe did turn out to be a truth, it would be a truth that Christ was buried there. The body could have been stolen never to be seen again. There's no inscription stating Christ was there. There's nothing written saying Christ rose from the dead. There's nothing written in any Roman records stating that his tomb was suddenly empty. As far as we know, Christ's body was picked apart by the birds while hanging on the cross, which was tradition, or thrown into a mass grave of criminals. We don't know. So to the Christian fundamentalists when they bring this up to me, the we know where the empty tomb of Christ is mantra, I would once again tell them, understand the difference between possibility and fact and conjecture versus concrete evidence. And if you'd like to continue the debunking of Christ's miracles and deeds, check out the playlist on the end card at the end of the video. And check out the second fall, an offbeat apocalypse sure to offend the fundamentalist. And I'll see you next time when we once again use that sword of reason and reality to thrust right through the heart of ignorance.